Today, I'm going to challenge myself to make two fruit-shaped cakes as realistic as it possibly can. So real. That at the end of this video, I'm going to place the fruit cakes next to the real fruits, and I'm gonna see if you can tell the difference. My goal is that you will not be able to tell the difference. This is seriously difficult. It's really, really hard to do. I'll explain why it's so difficult in just a minute. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Natalie Sidesurf, and I make cakes that do not look like cakes. And today, I'm gonna show you how I made cakes of a pear and an apple. Here I've got some real pears and a couple apples. There are two important attributes that I need to capture in order to trick you guys. Number one, I need to sculpt the correct proportions. And number two, I've gotta get the color spot on. Let's start with the pear. Throughout this cake build, I'm going to go back and forth working on the pear and the apple. I'll carve both cakes, and then I'll cover them in a layer of buttercream, and then a final layer of modeling chocolate. When I say that this is a ridiculously difficult challenge to pull off, I am not kidding. If I were to place a realistic fruit cake on a table all by itself, I wouldn't have to worry too much about getting my color and my proportions perfect because there's no fruit around to compare it to. But today, I'm going to place the pear and apple cakes next to the real fruits. And that means that you can compare my cakes to the real thing. So I have to go for true hyperrealism. I am both excited and nervous. This is a true challenge of my talents. Let me know in the comments if I was able to trick you or not. Now I'll set both cakes in the fridge to chill. While the cakes are chilling, I'm going to work on coloring the modeling chocolate. For the apple, I wanna match the lightest color that I see on the real apple. It looks to be light orange red, heavy on the yellow. So I start by adding yellow food color to white modeling chocolate. I mix it up and I'm left with yellow modeling chocolate. Now I wanna dull this vibrant red modeling chocolate. So I'm adding a little bit of green food color because green is the complementary color of red. Then I'll mix both the yellow and the red together. Now it matches that red color of the apple much better than the red I started with. Don't believe me yet? Well, get ready to really have your mind blown. I'm going to use the exact same colors that I used to make the apple for the pear. Red, yellow, and green. It's crazy, right? The only difference is that I'm using different amounts of each color. The pear will have mostly green, some yellow, and a tiny bit of red. This is some color wheel magic happening right here. And it's also why I chose to make green and red fruits today, because I can use the same three colors for both. Now I know this is a lot of hands-on activity happening here, but don't freak out on me. These cakes are small, so they're just for us. If they were for somebody else, I would definitely wear gloves while coloring the chocolate. This is the pear color I've been looking for, so now it's time to sculpt. Here I'm rolling out the green modeling chocolate and I'll use it to cover my pear-shaped cake first. Then I'll do the same for the apple cake before I go on to sculpt the details of both. I have been a fan of hyper-realistic art my whole life. As a kid, I always enjoyed realism in art and then when I discovered hyper-realism, I was in love. The difference between the two is realism is when you replicate something in a way that looks natural and real, but you know you're looking at art. Hyperrealism is when you recreate something in a way that is so lifelike that you could be tricked into thinking it's the real thing. A true hyperrealistic painting will make you think you're looking at a photograph, and a true hyperrealistic sculpture will make you think you're looking at the actual object. I'm inspired by hyperrealistic fine artists, but I also really love looking into artists that are in special effects. I think it would be so fun to dabble in special effects one day. Or special effects in cake. I don't know how that would work, but I'd love to try. Okay, now let's paint. Check out this mug. This is a Sidesurf Cake Studio mug. You can get one too at shop.sidesurfcakes.com. And if you're left-handed, images on both sides. And get your own. The pear and apple are sculpted, so now it's on to what I think is the most difficult part about making a hyper-realistic cake, the painting. I have a bachelor's degree in fine art, and guess what my concentration was? Just painting. And that's a good thing, because having that painting experience really helps me out when I paint cakes. You don't have to go to college for four years to learn how to do this, but if you are interested in painting, whether it's with traditional paints or on cakes, I highly recommend that you learn the basics of color theory. Once you learn the basics, it's all about practice. I get better and better at understanding color the more art I make. The apple is pretty close, so let's move on to the pear. Painting is, in my opinion, the hardest part about capturing realism. There's like infinity colors. 
So I'm just trying to get as close to the real color as I possibly can. Painting this pair gives me some minor anxiety. It's really, really fun, but it's also really, really difficult. There are darker green areas on the pair, and then it starts to get lighter towards the bottom. And the stem is many shades of brown. One of my favorite things to add to my cakes are the imperfections. That's because the imperfections really highlight the realism. There's no such thing as a perfect pair. Pair of what? <laughs> There. Pears typically have dents and marks, and I'm not about to leave those out. That's what makes this cake so interesting. Details like these always help to sell the cake as the real thing. At least in this case, I hope they do. My imperfections are looking nice and imperfect, so now all that's left are the spots. Pears are completely covered in green spots. They kinda look like freckles. Now I know that pears aren't very big, but that's still a lot of spots to paint with that tiny little brush. This is pretty repetitive and it takes a while, but I actually really enjoy it, kind of therapeutic. Pears have a little shine to them, so I'm spraying the cake with a little bit of cooking spray. Let's see that again. And don't worry, it's not greasy and you can't taste it. Now let's finish up the apple. Apple, ah, that's not how I say it. I say apple, which sounds bad. I made this little fondant stem and I'm painting it red and brown. I used fondant for this because at this tiny scale, fondant's gonna dry harder than modeling chocolate. Then I just place it in the top. The real red apples have tiny white dots all over them. So just like the pear, I'm painting in apple freckles and now I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm spraying the real apples with water to make them look freshly washed. The water beads up in a really interesting way and I love it so I'm going to add this detail to my cake apple. To create easy edible water droplets, I'm piping tiny dollops of piping gel right onto my cake apple. And there you have it. Here is the pear cake hidden amongst the real pears. I'm very happy with how close I match the size and the shape and the color of these real pears. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that gives this cake pear away. If you like this video, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. It helps me out so much and it's a free way that you can support my cake making. Now let's cut the cake. The second I cut this cake, the whole room filled with the smell of chocolate. <laughs> chocolate cake is my favorite. I'm gonna eat this one right up. Okay, now for the apple cake. And here it is, hanging out with the real apples. The water droplets are so shiny and pretty. I'm glad I included them. Even though they are piping gel, I really do think they read as water. Both cakes are up on my social media accounts, so head over there and see if I was able to convince anyone that these cakes are real. Now let's cut the apple. 